Hello everyone! In this episode I'd like to show you how you can enable or disable a group of polygons for any given object in your scene in DAS Studio. This is a great way to avoid poke through. So if you had a, an item of clothing and the body of the figure is kind of poking through, you can just go and select the underlying geometry of the figure and invisibilize those polygons so that they're just not showing anymore. The poke through is technically still there, but we don't see it anymore, which is kind of awesome. This is a video for one of my supporters, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. We've been discussing a couple of things in regards to fixing poke through. There's other ways of doing it. One way is to select the item of clothing and have a look if there's adjustment morphs in there. That's a great way of good clothing creators often put adjustment morphs in there that, that you make certain areas of your clothing a bit wider or shrink it down a bit. Then the second option that I suggested was to mess with the mesh smoothing, so the smoothing iterations on the object or the shape of the collision detection. That is something you can play with. But the third one I said, I'm going to make a video about this and this is that video. Switch off the selected geometry on those figures. And it's a little bit involved, but bear with me. There's a lot of things that you can do with this. And it's kind of an advanced tool in DAS Studio. I've got my amazing volunteer here, Grandad. Hello, Grandad. How you doing? He's happy to help me. He doesn't really have any clothing that currently pokes through, but I'm going to show you the principles on him anyway. I'll zoom right into him, onto his head here. I'll go and switch my viewport over to the wire texture shaded view. And I'll do that so that I can actually see the polygons on Grandad. Currently I can't see them, but in wire texture shaded, I'll, I'll be able to see all of them. Now notice that we have this kind of a larger square here that's that's outlined in black and a more thinner light gray kind of X in the middle there. Only the darker part on the outside, that is an actual polygon. The little X in the middle, this that subdivides this polygon into four polygons, is the subdivision surface modifier, the sub D that's applied. That's not actually baked in geometry that is implied geometry on the fly to make the figure look more high resolution than it actually is. So that helps with performance and all that. But in my case, I would really like to see just the polygons. I don't want to see the sub D. That will just make selection a little bit easier and less confusing, especially now that I'm showing it. So the first thing I'll do is with Grandad selected here, or with my figure selected, I'll head over to the parameters tab. And in here, I have this resolution level, which is, you know, currently set to high resolution. I'm going to go set that to base resolution and watch what happens when I do that. The little X's in the middle, they disappear. So now I see the actual polygon. That's just, you know, makes my life a little bit easier. If you need to do this more often with more than just one item in your scene. There's a great tool by 3D Universe that can make this happen for all the objects in your scene that really improves performance. If you have like 20 objects and they all have sub D applied, you can switch all of them off. And I'll leave a link in the description to this video. This is kind of the toolbar here. Um, if you click that, it'll have the same effect. That's the scene tools by 3D Universe. So that is a really nifty little tool. It makes everything high or low resolution in your scene. But not what I wanted to talk about. The most important thing to make our polygons visible or invisible, we need to switch to the geometry editing tool. And that's this one here. I have it here, the geometry editor. Either click this little icon here. If you don't see that icon, it is also under tools, geometry editor. You can pick that from there, from the menu. That's one thing we need. That's the tool that we need to select those polygons. Next, we need to go and open the tool settings. I already have them here at the bottom. If you don't have that tab, then head over to Window, Panes, and bring it up from there. Dock it somewhere sensible. Tool settings. And that means we can now go to work. With Grandad selected, the first thing that we'll see is often these things might be open here. So if you have a lot of groups open, just click the disclosure triangle so that they're all closed. That makes us a little bit more neat and tidy because we're going to be dealing with selection sets in a moment. Not just yet, but in a moment. Symmetry is usually also switched off, so one of those things. And the first thing that we might have to do is pick what we're actually selecting, what type of geometry. I need to select polygons, and I can do that over here. This little tool here selects polygons. This will select edges, and this will select vertices. 
So we need polygons, click that. And then the next thing we want to do is worry about how we're selecting things. Mine is set to something called paint selection that allows me to left click and drag over a series of polygons here. And they're then all selected as a result. But yours might behave differently. And we can change that by right clicking anywhere in your scene and investigating the selection mode. Mine is set to drag selection. That's kind of what we want. But there's also marquee and lasso selection. All of these will select your polygons in a different way. So let's use drag selection and drag out, like I have done here, a little selection on granddad's head. Now, if I wanted to make sure you can you can select these in, in any which way. If you left click and drag again, your current selection will be lost. So if you wanted to select multiple parts and leaving the selection intact, you can con you can control left click and then you can add to your selection. That is possible. There's other ways that you can grow and shrink selections as well. That's on right clicking this and this geometry selection. There's all kinds of things like grow selection, shrink selection, select connected and stuff. I will let you investigate that on your own. For me, it's important to let you know that when you select something, how you can turn it invisible. And that is also on this right click menu. So right click on the thing that you have selected and choose geometry visibility followed by not hide all polygons. I do that accidentally all the time. Say hide selected polygons. Hide all will literally make everything invisible. But we want to do hide selected polygons. And as a result, granddad's going to get a big hole in his head. It's a little bit creepy because that means we can look inside his body. Ugh. We can see all kinds of things happening there. But yes, that is how we can turn that piece of his body invisible. And if there was something that had been poking through at this point, it no longer pokes through and all we see is the item above it. Now to bring this back, I can either go and extend this selection. If I wanted to make that hole bigger, I can do this. And then once again, right click, geometry, visibility, hide selected polygons and make that hole bigger. I've even selected one at the back here accidentally. I didn't mean to do that. Granddad, giving you two holes there. This is how, what it looks like through your eyes, crazy. So currently the only way to undo that, it's not by control Z, which you'd expect, but no, that's Das Studio is all a little bit different here. But you have to go and right click on the figure and choose geometry visibility, show all polygons again. And that will now basically show everything that you've hidden. But right now, there's no easy way to kind of toggle this selection on and off, which is something we might want. So you might have several parts of your body that you might want to switch on and off independently going forward so that if you make adjustments, you only have to set these groups up once, these selection groups, and then toggle them visible or invisible. Let's do that next. I'll try to do this on his breast area because that's one of the areas of concern for, especially for female characters that often uh, nipples or breasts just poke through the clothing. And, you know, it's one of those things we can try to avoid that. Since this is an area that has symmetry, I can actually paint my selection with symmetry. So rather than going and selecting this part here, and then making that selection again with control held down, or maybe I forget to press it, I have to do all this again. I can do this with symmetry enabled. And there's this little option here, use symmetry along the X axis. You can use symmetry along all kinds of axes, Y or Z. You can't combine them, but you can use them you know, individually. So X is kind of what we want to mirror here. So let's say this is the selection, whoops. Let's say this is the selection that I'm gonna disable. And I want to save this as a selection set now so that I can easily toggle it on and off. I can do that on the left hand side here under selection sets. So left click this once and then once it's selected, you go and right click on it and choose create selection set from selected. And when you do that, a little dialog box pops up that lets you give it a name. So we'll call that the chest, which is just chest, whatever, and say accept. And as a result, under selection sets, if you open that up, you have one group now, which is the which is a group that we can turn on and off. So with this little eyeball icon here, off and on. Very cool. 
So in addition to this, I can now also go and create other groups. So if we go back to our head example, and I'd like to also, for some bizarre reason, have a hole in granddad's head that I'd like to save as a group. I can go and select that. Then once again, come over to the selection sets, left click on that, then right click on the selected thing and say create selection from selected. Give that another name and I'll call that head hole perhaps. And now we can plug it independently from the chest area. So that's kind of neat. Now you can go and switch these things on and off independently from one another. And this selection set on the, all your selection sets are being saved with your scene. So if you come back to this, you can go and enable and disable the geometry as you see fit. And then just before we leave, don't forget to, to turn your figure over to the high resolution setting again that's under parameters and then go over to base resolution you don't have to do high or base resolution you can select polygons with the high resolution selected it's not a problem it's just you know easier to not see quite so many lines on the screen i find that a little bit easier so one of those things i hope this was helpful fix your poke through and also show and hide other parts of your figure that you might not want to be in your scene so this is a good way to hide hair when you have a hat on top of the hair and you don't don't want to see parts of the hair that would otherwise poke through or if hair goes into shoulders and there's no other way to make it move away from that you can just go select that and then turn it invisible so all kinds of things that you can do with this tool without actually having to employ a proper 3d editor like blender that was it i hope this was helpful if you liked it then please go ahead and share this video with friends family and total strangers as well as other 3d enthusiasts if you'd like to say thank you for any of my tips then please consider becoming a supporter like jeff and so many other people are. I really appreciate you guys. This is so, so nice to have you on board. You can either drop me a one-off donation on Ko-fi or you can support me monthly on Patreon get exciting goodies in return like early access to ad free videos and all kinds of other exciting things like discord access my friends have a wonderful time i will see you next time take care bye bye <laughs>